Uh, Madam Clerk, would you read uh, item number one, please? Yes. Appointment. Bernice LaRoche of 807 Pearl Street as a constable in the City of Brockton for a term of three years. Invited Bernice L. LaRoche. Ms. LaRoche, would you just step up to the microphone and... Council, just so you know, this was actually on the agenda uh, at the last meeting. However, the address had been mistyped and uh, Ms. LaRoche has not received his mail. Uh, anything to say, Ms. LaRoche? So, uh, just to thank the council to accept me, to appoint me as a constable for the city of Brockton. Any questions? Council Dunapoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Um, this is, a, this is a, a new appointment? Yes, sir. Okay. Look, one question. Do you have a, a permit to carry a gun? No, no you sir. do not carry a weapon? Not yet. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Council Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. LaRoche, good evening. Um, do you have prior experience as a constable? No, sir. So this is your, your beginning a career as a constable in the city of Brockton? That's correct. Okay. Thank you for your, uh, your efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council. Motion to recommend in favor. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded to recommend favorably to the full city council. All those in favor? Opposed? Recommended favorably. Thank you and good luck, Ms. LaRoche. Thank you. Thank you. Item number two. Reappointment of John Marion of 45 Messina Drive, Brockton, to the Brockton Parking Authority for a five-year term ending June 2018. Invited John J. Mar Marion. Council Monahan. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I talked to uh, Mr. Marion today, and he is out of the state, but he is uh, happy to uh, be reappointed. Be Motion reappointed to approve. Today. Second. Motion made and seconded to recommend favorably to the full city council. All those in favor? Opposed? Recommended favorably. Item number three. Order appropriation of $700,000 from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health Bureau of Substance Abuse Services, Massachusetts Opiate Abuse Prevention Collaborative Grant to the Mayor's Department, Massachusetts Opiate Abuse Prevention Collaborative Grant. Invited John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Coron Capiello, Director of Community Social Services. Good, Good evening, evening, counselors. Good evening. This is a uh, $700,000 grant for seven years, $100,000 a year. Um, it is a regional approach, and we are partnering to mentor with the communities of Rockland, East Bridgewater, and Whitman. Um, an RFP went out, and High Point Treatment Center was awarded the contract to continue um, to manage this program through the Mayor's Opiate Overdose Prevention Coalition. Any questions? Favorable recommendation. Second. Second. Motion uh, made, uh, Councilor Brophy. Um, so. The mayor's office will be coordinating with the other communities, correct? Everything will be coordinated out of Brockton? Correct. Brockton received the funding. But it will be co coordinated to us through High Point? Yes. Okay. It, it's like uh, I will work closely with High Point, but High Point received the RFP through the mayor's office. And do they report to you? Do they give you um, monthly reports, quarterly yes. reports? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, and what do they plan to do with the money? Uh, so it's all dependent on the state. I don't know if you remember, but in 2008, um, High Point actually received this funding. Um, and this time, the, the state did it that it had to go to municipalities. Um, but it's the same approach um, as what happened in 2008. So a whole assessment process has to happen before we can determine what happens with the money. Okay. Um, but it is uh, policy, environmental, and educational changes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? The motion has been made and seconded to recommend, recommend favorably. All those in favor? Opposed? Recommended favorably to the full City Council. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Capiello. Item number four. Order that the City Council accepts the grant of easement from the City of Brockton to the Massachusetts Electric Company for the installation, maintenance, and operation of an underground electric distribution system located within the easement area of the here and after described property owned by the City of Brockton, plot 45 on map number 92 of the City of Brockton Assessor's Maps, also having a parcel ID of 092-019. Invited Michael Thorson, Commissioner of DPW, Howard Newton, Superintendent of Engineering, Christopher Raymond, Engineering Supervisor of National Grid and or his designee. Uh, councilors, I received an email from Mr. Newton. He had just returned from vacation today and had a previous commitment, but his email states that he has not been involved with this process. Uh, hopefully Mr. Thorson and Mr. Raymond can answer our questions if Mr. Raymond is here. Council Mr. Thorson. Oh, good evening. Uh, just to give you a quick uh, 
where really this is. This is at the uh, fire station on Pleasant Street. This is a part of the Pleasant Street project. Um, what National Grid has to do is put in an electrical distribution station located within the easement. Um, it's on the uh, property uh, of the fire department and the sidewalk that's in front of the fire department. It's uh, a grant of easement to them so they can do their work. Any questions? Entertain a motion. Motion, motion approved. Approve. Second. 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 Motion made and seconded to recommend favorably to the full city council. All those in favor? <coughs> Holds. Recommended favorably. Thank you, Mr. Thurston. Thank you. Item number five. Resolved that the mayor, DPW superintendent, building commissioner, and the park commissioner come before the finance committee to discuss and outline the maintenance and upkeep protocols associated with the designated veterans memorial <coughs> parks, squares, and or properties located within <coughs> the city. Invited Mayor Linda Balzotti, Michael Thorson, DPW Commissioner, James Casseri, Superintendent of Buildings, Timothy Carpenter, Superintendent of Parks, David Farrell, Director of Veterans Affairs, Lorraine Luizzi, City Resident. Uh, Mr. Council, Chairman. Council Sullivan. Uh, thank you. Uh, Council, just to refresh your memory, I, I filed this resolve, and as you uh, may remember, during the budget hearings, I, uh, I brought this issue up uh, to, to Mr. Thorson, Mr. Casseri, Mr. Carpenter, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to see Mr. Farrell here as well today. Um, I, I, I think that this is an issue uh, that's long overdue and uh, you know people may say there's lack of manpower and lack of money but with all due respect we need to do the right thing and I'm very very dismayed that the city of Brockton uh, has not uh, kept up the various squares, parks and monuments dedicated to those who gave their life, Brocktonians that died in battle for our freedom. I drove by on Sunday next to the old Enterprise uh, where the Fry's cigar store used to be across from Legion Parkway, the Korean War Memorial Park. Gentlemen and ladies, the grass is 18 inches high there. That's pathetic. That's absurd. And that's really insulting to those that died. So I'm really uh, happy uh, to have the individuals here tonight. Uh, what I'm hoping uh, to do with this discussion, and the, really the purpose and intent, is to establish some type of regular upkeep and maintenance and to des designate what department is going to handle this because, again, it needs to be done. Um, I invited, for full disclosure, my mother-in-law, Lorraine Louisi, who is a constituent of uh, Mr. Ian Airy, um, and she's here tonight to testify, uh, not as my mother-in-law, of course, but as a concerned citizen, but more importantly, her uncle gave the ultimate sacrifice in World War II, and there's a square on the east side of Brockton near the uh, east, uh, uh, east Side Fire Station that bears his name. And, uh, and with all due respect, they have to go on a regular basis, her and her husband, Anthony, uh, to cut the grass and weed it. And that's not right. And it's not just Thomas Sully Square that we're talking about tonight. Whoever came up with this, and I thank you for whoever designated uh, an inventory here of the, uh, the, the various veterans memorial squares and monuments here in the city of Brockton, we need to make sure that they are all maintained. Uh, on the other side, polar opposite, in excellent condition, and, uh, and, and Councillor uh, at Lodge Petty would, would know this because he runs West Chestnut Street all the time. The Holster Park up there is in beautiful, beautiful condition. So I think we need to come up tonight with a process. And again, I want to thank the gentleman that came here tonight, and, and I want to thank uh, Mrs. Louise for coming here. And I'm interested to hear her story as well. And I think you'll, you'll all understand after she talks, and she spent countless hours of research, uh, how important it is to her and her family, but more importantly for the generation. Those that don't know about World War II or World War I or the Civil War, Korean or Vietnam, uh, the kids. And, and this is not just for us uh, colleagues, but this is for the next generation. So with that, again, I'm going to ask uh, uh, the gentleman that I questioned during the budget hearing if they'd come up with any type of information and uh, they could share with us tonight. We could probably come to some resolution. That's what I'm hopeful for. Mr. Carpenter. Good evening, counselors. Um, provided you've been given a list um, that um, Mr. Farrell um, has been kind enough to forward to me. Um, the, <clears throat> the numbers that you see highlighted in yellow are traditionally ones that the Parks Department tries to get around and maintain. The ones in blue um, usually fall under the care of public property. Um, there are some on this list that, uh, or that are excluded from this list that the Parks Department also tries to maintain um, up on Battles in Richmond. Um, across from the east side pool um, there's three in dw fields park and the daughters of george washington monument over on spring and pleasant um, 
I don't think that there's um, a specific assignment necessarily for the maintenance of these, which I think is what we really need to work on. Yeah, that's right. Um, and I think that'll, that'll ease who's working where and when. Um, <coughs> but in the ordinances for, let's say, the Parks Department, there isn't anything in those ordinances about um, the, the memorials throughout the city. It's sort of just been tradition that the Parks Department has maintained the whatever 14 listed here. Yeah, and Mr. Calvin, I, I, I agree with that. I got a call actually during the budget hearings that the, the next morning from a, 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 an employee of the city of Brockton who said in the 1970s he worked for the Parks Department and it was, uh, it was their ritual to, to take care, specifically he mentioned, and I mentioned it to, to the gentleman here tonight, the one near the Howard Street Bridge, which is in deplorable condition. Um, you can't even read the plaque. Uh, a Brockton police officer stopped me today uh, during lunch and told me that the sign that was on battles for a designated veteran that gave his life is, is gone. Uh, maybe it was stolen because people are scrapping it for money, and it's sad to say, but it's a reality. Um, so I think I, I am um, not happy that the mayor's not here tonight. I'm not happy at all. I know you're here as her department heads, uh, but I think this is extremely important. I know her father was a veteran. so. Um, you know, I, I think I'm hopeful that we can come up with something. Um, I also was hoping, and you know, again, this may be down the line, but I'm hoping that a booklet can be created and maybe right in your office, Dave, if people want to do a walking tour or visit some of these sites, they'll know exactly where they are, number one. Number two, there could be a small bio about the individuals that passed away. I think that's the only thing that's the right thing to do. Um, so I, I, I know that, again, you're always here during tough economic times. You know, we don't have the time, we don't have the money, but that's not right. So um, I'm hoping, and uh, I am quite honestly a little upset that since the budget hearing to present day, um, again, I know some individuals that had to go to a site on two or three occasions to weed and cut, and that's just not right. So um, I don't know how it's going to be worked out, and again, I'm only one of 11, um, but we are a strong council, weak May or formal government here under the charter. And on this, this isn't politics. This is appropriateness and respect and honor. So, um, you know, Tim, I'm not trying to bash you. I know you got your hands full. Um, and I know, you know, it, times are tough. But we need to collectively, and I'd like to hear from you, Mr. Kassiri, as well, and Mr. Farrell, Mr. Thorson, because I, again, uh, we had the budget conversation three and a half weeks ago now. And uh, I don't know what's been done, but I know one spot that hasn't been taken care of. So, um, Mr. Thorson, do you have anything to offer tonight? Well, after the budget, uh, good evening. Um, good evening. Can I just digress one second? There was a representative uh, from National Grid here. He didn't oh, he speak, was here, but okay. he, he was here. Thank you. Anyway, um, just to uh, reiterate from the budget hearings, we did where I did, uh, Mr. Carpenter and I had a conversation and we did send some people to do a couple of the parks after the budget hearings. Um, we haven't set up a schedule yet to do a specific portion or a specific park or I, well, I don't want to call them parks because that's, we're not in the parks business, Mr. Carpenter is, but these squares, memorials, et cetera. Um, the ones that are in the downtown area, I've, uh, I have reached out a bit to the red shirt people. Maybe they can help us out because they do downtown every day. So that might be one solution to help out there. Um, they do have some ability to do some weed whacking and some mowing, so they might be able to help us along those lines. Um, if we get a list of areas that need to go, I, I don't have. Uh, we've got the summer help kids that are here now. Um, they're here for eight weeks. They're in week number, this may be week number three of eight, but we may be able to use them a little bit in some some type of capacity which would help out. You know, I just want to make sure that we're not um, stepping on the wrong toes or anything, but we, we could certainly talk about that. Um, I think Mr. Carpenter alluded to the fact that if we had uh, somehow a, a method to uh, work with you, you folks, um, to assign, I, I know that I'll call ownership to these, and it might be easier than 
that there wouldn't be any falling through a crack or slipping through a crack. So those are just some ideas that I have. That yeah, we throw no, and, out I, and I, I think uh, okay. I think you might be onto something there, Mr. Thorson. If we can designate and maybe uh, you know split up the inventory, um, you know I think uh, many hands make light work. Um, but at the end of the day, we just need to get it done. I mean, it's it's oh yeah it's, yeah it's no I city. agree it's for the I city. Agree. Um, sure. You know, and, and to get the red shirts, okay. uh, that's great. They do yeoman's work downtown. But, you know, if we're trying to bring economic development to the city of Brockton downtown, Chapter 40, our smart growth zone, Eternity Financial, $30 million, right next to the Enterprise Building, Korean War. I mean, it was insulting to look at it the other day. It's embarrassing. And that's right at Memorial, right at the um, Legion Parkway. So um, whatever needs to be done, uh, you have my support. I know you have the, the, the council's support as a whole. Um, and again, I just think we need to honor these people that gave the ultimate sacrifice. So, um, Mr. Casir, do you have any, anything that you want to add? Thank you, Mr. Thorson. Yeah, the, the um, one you just referred to, Councillor, on Center at Maine, that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, Trinity is actually going to take control of that one. They are going to But they're not now. It. No, they haven't, and I haven't actually looked at that one. Um, could you, could you do that for me, Mr. Kassiri, tomorrow? Yeah. I mean, literally, Jim, it's bad. See, the, the issue that Tim raised is a good one uh, about designating these because public property isn't just going to go out and do these where we're worried about stepping on toes for the park department <coughs> has been doing some of them. I think maybe there should be ordinance that designates ownership of these different ones to each department. That way we're not... Yeah, I sit on ordinance, the chairman of ordinance is here, we'll get that done, we'll do it this. Yeah, the three of us sat down today, Mike and Tim and myself, and uh, I think Mike might have come up with that idea. But I think it's that, a great idea. That was a good one, I thought, too. Okay. Well, we, uh, again, with time is ticking in terms of this uh, legislative session, but we'll, we'll get it done before the new election, before we lose Mr. Brophy and Mr. Petty. And in fairness to the Park Department, and I know you guys all know this as well as I do, he has three guys there, and they have 50 ball fields, and... Plus DW Field Park. I mean, he'll, he'll tell you he could put five guys up DW Field Park full time. Yeah, and, and, and just I, keep up. I appreciate that, but it could take 10 minutes to cut one of these squares, Jim. And is that what we're talking about, Councilor? Cutting? Or are we I'm talking, talking about, about maintaining? I'm talking about maintaining them, making them look appropriate out of respect for the right. people that died. Yeah. And when you drive by some of these, it's it's a blight, and it shouldn't right. be. So again, I can appreciate. You know, when, when times are good and the money, the pot of gold is here, everything's flourishing, you can jump, you know, jump over circles to get things done. I understand that, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I will, uh, I'll draft the ordinance with Attorney Gilday, and uh, again, we'd like your input, uh, Mr. Thorson, Mr. Kasiri, Mr. Farrell as well, and Mr. Carpenter. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not, again, this wasn't to bash, this is to nope. bring up a conversation that is long overdue, and uh, I think collectively we can work uh, as, as a, really as a collaborative approach to get the thing done um, timely. And uh, again, I want to thank you for being here tonight, Mr. Kassiri, Mr. Coppin, Mr. Thorson, and Mr. Farrell, if you could come to the podium. Dave, and I, and I apologize when I draft, drafted the resolve. I'm glad you're here tonight. I'm, I didn't mean to slight you with the, uh, the actual verbiage, so thank you for being here tonight, you're and uh, thank you for your service to our country. Um, what, what, what are your thoughts on this? Have you ever had any complaints from any veterans at all? Generally, it's from uh, families of veterans who, uh, you know, have um, uh, loved ones buried, or generally I get the cemetery complaints. Uh, either f a f grave has been missed in terms of uh, posting a flag or uh, the upkeep of uh, the cemeteries and what, uh, you know, would be desirable by a family member. I seldom get complaints unless, as you've alluded to, there's a missing sign, uh, a, play a location where a veteran's uh, memorial, and I'm talking about kind of the, the one that's posted on a pole at an intersection, has been knocked down, stolen, or is just not there anymore and, you know, taken away in the winter's uh, damage, and uh, it w needs to be replaced. Um, and, and how is it that we replace those? Because someone asked me today, and I didn't, I didn't know. Basically, I, I take care of it through the Veterans Services uh, budget. I, uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't generally replace it in kind. I think the type of sign you're talking about is a bronze yeah. uh, sign. It's very attractive, uh, but also has an alternative source of, you know, that people steal them, and uh, they turn them in for money. So I go with a kind of an aluminum sign with, uh, you know, highlighted lettering. 
Um, I'm going to change that because I don't like one of the samples of that that uh, uh, Mr. Cap uh, Mr. Capozzi is memorialized in. So I think we're going to update that and uh, make it more attractive. I guess may maybe use something other than bronze, but something that looks like bronze uh, that can be posted at Lyme and, uh, and um, Wendell. But um, before I forget, my uh, that's an excellent idea on the booklet. I, I will do that. Uh, I would like your cooperation, if I could, uh, members of the council, to you have this list in front of you. And one of my fears has been I'm missing something. Uh, I forgot someone. Uh, if you could, you, you get around the community a lot more than I do. If you have people who uh, see the list or have knowledge of veterans who were uh, memorialized at an intersection and there's no mark of it anymore, if you could let my office know, I can include them in the booklet you've alluded to because. That's easy to do, you know, and uh, now's the time to do it uh, yeah, during the I, summer. I, and you know what, I, I actually, I'm, I'm a little disappointed. I had invited the Enterprise to be here tonight. I know they ran a nice article tonight about an Eastern vet from World War II yes, that's volunteering that's right. in yeah. Brockton, which is great. Yeah. But I thought this was a newsworthy story because, again, there could be um, relatives in their 70s, 80s, or 90s right. uh, that have information that we just don't have. So, um, yeah, I, I think that, that the booklet, and I know like Brockton Public Schools, seniors at Brockton High, and they have to do um, service in order to get a diploma. It might be something, you know, if, if manpower or woman power is lacking, you know, to get some assistance that way as well. Um, but I think at the end of the day, um, we're heading in the right direction. I just want to kind of make sure that the, uh, the snowball effect happens quickly. So um, I, I'll work with you, Dave, and, and whatever needs to be done, I think it, it needs to be done sooner than later. So I want to thank you, and not to hog all the time, but if I could just have Mrs. Louise come up as well. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Why I'm here this evening. My name is Lorraine Louise, a resident of Brockton for the past 46 years, and a niece of Joseph J. Tomaselli, who was an upstanding and proud resident of this city, who at 27 years of age was killed in action as a United States Army Air Force radio man in a B-17 F bomber which flew in a raid over Kiel, Germany on June 13, 1943. I come before you this evening to speak in particular about the condition of a square, Thomas Ellie Square, which was dedicated to the memory of this war hero on December 7, 1947, and also in a general way to speak about the condition of the various other memorials around the city which have been dedicated to servicemen and women who have made the ultimate sacrifice while defending and protecting the freedoms that we, the people of this country, hold so dear. Who is Joseph J. Tomaselli? Although I was born after he was killed in action, I have grown up learning about Uncle Joe from his adoring eight siblings, as well as various of his contemporaries during his years at Brockton High School. Hard-working, handsome, popular, Joe was president of his class of 700 students graduating from BHS in 1934. While in high school, he devoted all of his spare time to working, giving a great amount of financial help to his family. He was the third of ten children, one of whom died at age seven, and worked as an usher at the Brockton Theater in downtown Brockton and as a salesman at Linehan's clothing store. Also, he served as a caddy at Thorny Lee. Following high school, he worked in a men's clothing store in Boston called Lieberman's. By this time, he provided the finances for one of his younger sisters to attend and graduate from secretarial school, all the while keeping his younger sisters under his thumb, always stressing the importance of finishing high school and bringing honor to his family. They all revered him and wouldn't think of disappointing Joe. Each of his siblings knew that he appreciated the finer things of life, he was a great role model to each of his eight remaining siblings. He entered the service at age 25, and after studying and passing his exams, he graduated as technical sergeant in the Army Air Force. He served his country for two and a half years before he was killed in action at the age of 27 while on a flight mission to bomb submarine factories and shipyards in Kiel, Germany. On June 13, 1943, his plane, named Miss Carriage, was shot down. As a result of extremely high winds on that Sunday morning, 
His parachute drifted over the North Sea, and it is there that he is presumably buried. He was one of the first youths from the east side of Brockton, born of Italian immigrants, to make the supreme sacrifice during World War II. He was awarded the Purple Heart posthumously. To honor the memory of Joseph J. Tomaselli, radio man and bombardier, who lost his life over Kiel, Germany, a proposal was made by the Ward 5 Italo-American Club and was approved at a meeting of the City Council in 1947 to erect a memorial to Uncle Joe to be named Thomas Alley Square. Located at the intersection of Summit and Grove Streets on the east side, Thomas Alley Square was dedicated on December 7, 1947. The Ward 5 organization decided to dedicate the square for the son of a member of their group, this being my grandfather, Stefano Tomaselli. Dominic Piscatelli was chairman of the committee on Tomaselli Square. What I'd ask of the city of Brockton. The memorial to this hero and other memorials around the city have neither been properly nor regularly maintained by the city. The grass is rarely cut, trash has not been tended to, the street sweeper goes right by, as evidenced by the amount of sand accumulated in the street along the curb. My husband has been maintaining Uncle Joe's memorial for several, several years now, due to the negligence displayed on the part of the city. This year, on the day before Memorial Day, when my husband and I went to Thomas Alley Square to place geraniums, the grass had not even been cut in preparation for Memorial Day. Needless to say, it was a disgraceful sight. We have maintained it every two weeks since then and throughout the summer. There is no evidence that the city has cut it. To those people who may say or think, who cares? I say this. Though all but two of Uncle Joe's siblings have died, there are numerous nieces and nephews that he left behind, and certainly we care. In addition, Regarding the greater population within this city, I can tell you that when my husband is working for hours at a time at this site, truckers blow their horns. People send a wave and a shout of gratitude. And he presumes that these people are themselves veterans who appreciate the care and time given in the upkeep of a fallen hero's memorial. Joseph J. Tomaselli died in the honorable service of his country. He has died while helping to preserve the freedoms under which he lived. It is the men and women who have served and continue to serve this country who are truly the champions of this city. We hear the rhetoric time after time about the drastic decrease in the city workforce responsible for the upkeep of spaces within our city, that there is just not enough money to hire more people to care for this and that, Whatever happened to the ideals of beautification of Brockton to return it to its former proud image? Most importantly, shouldn't these memorials to our war heroes be a priority in terms of upkeep and beauty? Each of these memorials was dedicated at various times, whether in the distant past or more recent history of the city. A memorial signifies, among other terms, importance, remembrance, and over time, not just for today, this year, or during this century, but forever. May Joseph Thomas Alley Square and the other memorials placed around this city be forever commemorated, honored, supported, and maintained by this city for generations to come. For in this city, Regularly maintaining these memorials is both a duty and an honor. Thank you for your time. I, I, want, to, uh, I want to thank you, Mrs. Louise, for sharing that um, personal uh, historical information. And I, 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 I can't add anything. I think you just summed up exactly um, why there's a dire need to address this. And I think it's, uh, it's ironic that I have Carl Landerholm here tonight, president of the Brockton Historical Society, because this is Brockton history that we're talking about. So we need, need to address this. We're going to address it um, through an ordinance process. We're going to work uh, with the uh, appropriate personnel. Uh, but it's just not fair to have Mr. and Mrs. Louisi and Mr. and Mrs. Smith and Jones and Mr. and Mrs. Brocktonian 
fixing these and repairing these and upkeeping these. It needs to be done by the city. That's the right thing to do. So I want to thank you again for sharing that. I don't have any questions if anybody else does, but thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you very much, thank Mrs. Louisi. I have a hand up. Okay, great. Thank you. If you can just give it to the clerk and we'll hand it out as we get to our next questions. Councilor Dubois. Thank you, uh, Mr. Cruz. Thank you, Mrs. Louisi. I thought that was a great, um, great information about your family. Um, those of you that are here from the city, if you could just um, um, maybe make a mental note of what I'm about to say, I'd appreciate it. Um, the, the memorials in and around Ward 6 I've played special attention to. Um, the one at the corner of Howard and Spark Street, Charles Allure Davis Triangle. Um, through a donation from DiLorenzo two years ago, um, we had flowers installed in those two triangles. <coughs> and the types of flowers and greenery that were installed are kind of self-maintaining um, once they are in for a couple of years. So low-growing greenery and some um, lilies and some low um, grass. So DiLorenzo came out. He had his friend and his coworker install all that. Um, beautification and right now that square needs a sign it needs someone to weed it and put down some mulch and more or less that square would be maintained every time I when when we had it installed I talked to many residents that like Mrs. Louise said um, were really happy to see that there were flowers in that plot that just was full of weeds for years and years um, after that intersection was redone so as far as that goes I think it was a simple sign and then maybe you could even coordinate with a garden club to do the weeding if you could provide some mulch I know that I keep thinking I'm going to do it and I probably will if you don't get to it because I usually do it two or three times a year but it takes like three hours three to six hours so you should just plan on that and the next one um, General Pulowski Square and that's at the corner of Howard and North Montello Street three um, Keep Brockton Beautiful days ago I and a group of business people from that area went out and planted a whole bunch of flowers around the stone where um, General Pulowski's plaque is supposed to be, which is long gone. We installed two green um, bushes in the back and a whole bunch of wildflowers in front of that. Um, and when people drive by it, I always get compliments on that, how that looks as well. So that needs a plaque. And the gentleman who owns Spark Street Automotive has offered to create that plaque. And he can do it with um, just metal that only, well, only idiot steel um, plaques anyways. But metal that isn't worth what, um, what bronze would be worth but he can make it look very nice because that's open. Um, as an aside on that, that square, I would appreciate it if you'd look into it because I spoke with the owners of Barber Corporation and told them how we had went out with business people from the north side and fixed all that up, and he said that he owned that square. And I said, I didn't think that the city could sell a square, but crazy things happened back when um, Mr. Units was mayor, so I don't know what happened, if that was sold or it wasn't. If you could look into that, because we have been maintaining that memorial to General Pulowski for the last couple of years, and if Barber does own it, they're very nice business people. I'm sure that they would either give us some sort of maybe they would give us that portion of the of the square back so we can honor Mr. Pulowski correctly and then just in final uh, the monument at the end of Legion Parkway where the I believe it's the um, uh, honor all veterans Legion Parkway and Warren Ave the big um, the big monument uh, two summers ago I went out with um, Joe uh, Rakowskis of the Brockton Garden Club, her husband, Patrick Quinn, and I installed greenery um, at that that's still there, their little shrubs and flowers. Um, and I know of many residents in Brockton that do exactly like uh, Mrs. Louise and her husband do in trying to maintain um, these, these, um, these areas. And I appreciate what you do. But you are right. The city needs to take more pride in their fallen heroes. And I know that when I t partake in these type of activities, I think about my uncle who gave his life in the Korean War. And my mother still marches at parades on his behalf. So it is important. And thank you, um, Councillor Sullivan. Thank you, Councillor.
I'm done. Thank you. Councilor Monahan. Thank you. Uh, if I can get all the department heads up there. For, just at once. Just well, as, <clears throat> as Councilor Sullivan. And by the way, Mrs. Louise, thank you for that very passionate presentation. Very nice. Um, what is the plan right now? We're, we're going to have to uh, get an ordinance together. In that ordinance, you guys have already talked about splitting up these different uh, memorials. And f for, the, for the time being, this will be getting done, and they will all be cleaned up within the next time yeah. frame? Well, the three of us will talk tomorrow, and we'll uh, each take a few, I guess, guys, right? And uh, we'll get them done. But it's going to need to be designated at some point. So you guys will actually just figure it out among yourself so which is the best uh, way to proceed, and then we'll just put it into an ordinance. Right. And that should take care of it, I would think, for the future. You guys have any, no problems at all with that, right? I don't. No, no. Shouldn't have any issue with money, manpower, or anything else like that to get these cleaned up? No. Okay. It should be done. Get right, we'll get on that as soon as we can. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor McMillan, Macmillan. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman, good evening. Um, let's have Mr. Carpenter, if you don't mind. And Mrs. Louise, I want to thank you very much for uh, that, that, that speech. It was very, very good. Thank you. Um, Mr. Carpenter, how are you? Fine, thank you. Okay. Um, who does the, uh, the uh, I see here that you have the list here. Um, but the Salisbury Park on Crescent, um, that, that is done, uh, it looks very good. I mean, someone takes some detail on that. Who does, uh, who does that work there? Um, we do both the one that's in Salisbury Park with the flagpole right there and the one right across the street from the east side pool. So both of those. Do you, the Parks Department does that? Crescent and, and, Crescent and, uh, and, and Montello? The parks themselves or the memorials? You guys are in two different locations. Yeah. Oh, my. Okay. I'm, I'm right. talking about the corner lot there. It's not a memorial, but it's a park, I guess. But it's, it's, it is yeah. a memorial. Salisbury Park is over. Well, yes. it's a well, it's homeless shelter. Salisbury Park. Where's the memorial? Salisbury River Plain Park. President okay. The way I would refer what to location are you talking about? The one on the corner there that uh, it has, it used to have a sprinkler and everything. That's the one public property does. Uh, Center in Montello? Yes. And Crescent in Montello? <laughs> The two of them there. That's not a memorial park, though, is it? No. Okay. All right. No. Well, whoever does that, it does a great job. Oh, um, thank you. Public property does those two there. Okay. Uh, I know that memorial this as well. Excuse me. We do the wall memorial as well. Yeah. Okay. Very good job. Thank um, you. I just want to say that the the memorial in my area on Oak Street and Battles was looked like it get run over. It has a small wall. Um, made of stone. It got run over. It had DPW barrel sit, sitting there. I think it's a highway. Um, someone must have missed the curve on, on Oak Street, and that's shop curve in front of a CVS. Uh, it's been sitting there all banged up for a, a month at least now. I'm just wondering, I wasn't sure who was supposed to be taking care of that. Uh, if someone could please address that, it'd be, it'd be, it would be appreciated. Uh, right in front of CVS on Oak Street. It's a triangle um, where the lights are. And Battle, also Battle Street and Oak? Battles in, uh, in, in Oak, yep. yes. Um, I'm not sure if do we, gentlemen, do we actually need an ordinance to take care of this? Because we, if we can delegate these, these, group, these places up and where the manpower has, the, where we have the most manpower should be taking care of it. Uh, if we can all coordinate it, you, your three departments and such, I don't see what the what the issue is. Uh, how, wh why we have to wait for an ordinance? The ordinance is going to take a little while for us to get this done, especially with the summer session. But if I mean, there's a need. Is there a need? Actually, need for an ordinance to tell you to do something that's supposed to be done? Uh, that really wouldn't be the issue. We, the three of us, will get together and we'll figure out which ones we're going to do. The ordinance would be in play to because of union issues you down know. the road. You're going to need an ordinance in play because people are going to say, that's my park, why are you mowing it? It's right. going to have to be, ownership is going to have to be given. For instance, the park you mentioned at Center, I mean Crescent and Montello, right. that was a brand new park. Both of those Salisbury parks were created under the units administration and at that time, Mr. Dorgan didn't want to maintain those parks. He didn't have enough guys, so what happened is uh, Jack Units asked 
the public property department if they'd maintain them. So we've been maintaining those parks since they were built. Right. But those are unique parks. They have sprinkler systems. Uh, they have stone walls. They have lighting issues in there. So we have the right personnel to do that. Plus, he figured since we're public property and we maintain public properties, it wasn't a far stretch that mowing lawns and mulching and maintaining the sprinkler systems is, is maintenance. So we equipped ourselves with a trailer and lawnmowers, and we take care of that, those two parks there. We also take care of the GAR park, the one right out here, okay, and the War Memorial building. I mean, uh, they, I think they, they look very nice, uh, very well. well really, do need to assign ownership. We can, put, we'll get, we'll get through this right now. We'll work together and get through it, but it really should be assigned to, to departments who owns what. Right now, it's, it's not assigned really to anyone. It's it is just not. Whoever can take it will get, get it done. Right. Um, so is that going to be an issue with the unions then? Because there is no, right there now, is no, there's no ownership on it exactly. right now. Exactly. And I would say that public property, since we maintain public property, and parks, since they maintain parks, it, it's not a far stretch that either one of those should be fine. And the DPW is coming And the in? DPW, they're in the streets, so they maintain right. the streets. And well, I mean, so it goes, goes back to my question. Is there actually a need, if we can divvy this up right now? There is a need. For an ordinance? Yes. I don't see it. If we assign it on overtime, who's going to get it? Whoever has those parks. Whoever has, what is the park, but whoever has those, those monuments. That's what I'm getting at. Right. No one has them. Exactly. So if you divvy it up... <laughs> Who's on first? Here we go again. I mean, is this the Three Stooges or what? It won't work that way, Councilor. But uh, you're telling me right now. I mean, I'm, I'm not seeing if I get this or not, Jim. But you tell me you're going to chop this up right now and have this taken care of. Hopefully. Correct. Yep. So why can't the three of you sit down and say, look, from now on, this is since no one is claiming ownership, I am going to take ownership from my department on these five. You take ownership from it's this over. point on of those five, and, and, and so on. If there's overtime needed for any one of those that you are taking ownership of, your, gentlemen, your guys will be working the overtime. Mm -hmm. If Tim needs overtime to work on those that he's taking ownership for, then he'll pay his guys overtime for that. Okay, so the that's councilors are agreeing to leave oh, it no, to us. I mean, that's a good question, and I like it. If you guys want to, if you guys can just, because the only thing I'm, I'm not against the ordinance, ordinance, but I mean, it's a long time coming. It's going to be three months down the road. We're talking probably at the end of this year before this ordinance gets through. You know how the red tape works. And right. We're in summer session. We won't be getting out of summer se session until September or so, and, mm -hmm. and so on. So, I mean, it's, it's just common sense is, you know, if you guys can work together, which you uh, obviously had a meeting today, and it seems that you can. We will. And then we'll we'll do exactly you? as you're suggesting. That's what uh, we'll just, do. Just a suggestion, Jeff. No, it's a just good a one. Suggestion. It's a I common mean, sense one. Yeah, well, yeah, that's all. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilor, Councilor DiNapoli. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Great words, Councilor. Mrs. Louisi, this was an excellent presentation, and it takes someone like you to get something done. And we're all here, we all work for the city of Brockton. And, you know, these memorial parks, they are in disarray. And I'm going to speak about one right now. But uh, I, I want to thank you. you no, know, you, can, you can sit. I want to thank you very much for your presentation. It uh, takes courage to come up here and, and, and do what you have to do. Can I speak to Mr. Farrell? Because I noticed uh, number 33 over here has been taken off the... Uh, off the list, and that's the uh, uh, Louis Tarantino Memorial Park on Older Street. Yes, sir. When, when was that dismantled? About four years ago, uh, three years ago. Um, Mr. Tarantino has moved from the location. He used to maintain that park, uh, and as a, uh, at the time, I think he was president of the ITAMS, Italian American uh, War Veterans. He, um, you know, through his leaving the area, the park kind of fell into uh, disuse and uh, was unkempt, and they moved the memorial up to Oak Street on the um, island there uh, between the parks, um, between DW Field Park. What, what, uh, what are we doing with that land on, on Oda Street now? Well, it's uh, still a park, but it's not dedicated to the Italian-American war veterans. It's not maintained by any, uh, any group. I don't even understand that. Mrs. Luisi, yes? 
You want to you wanna come up and... No, you're not out of no. order. No. Well, I, you, I, you can have the floor. Come on up. I spoke with Mr. Tarantino two days ago, and that, um, that park was at the site of my grandparents, Thomas Ellie's mm -hmm. house. And through urban renewal, their house was removed, and it became a park. His, his monument was so defaced, and, and, and covered with graffiti mm -hmm. that he had moved it to Oak Street, but he has since removed it from Oak Street, and it's now at the War Memorial. Okay. And it's well taken care of, he said. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you very much for the information. Because I, you know, I mean, it's, it's in my ward, and I, I always wonder what happened to it because nobody told me that it disappeared. But that, that park is presently maintained by the park department. Okay. okay. I mean, well, I know the park is there, but the, I know that I was at the dedication with the statue that was dedicated to Louis. All right. Well, th well, thank you very much. And thank you, gentlemen. I'm sure, you know, working together, because we all work for the city of Brockton, we can take care of some of these parks. And I don't, you know, it's just amazing. We, uh, I know we have to do with unions and deal with, uh, I own that, I own this, but it's still part of the city of Brockton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Studensky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Farrell. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I just want to run something by you, a little bit of thinking out of the box. The former President Bush, the first one, was on tonight receiving an award for the Thousand Lights program he started, which was volunteerism. Is there a way that you might draw up a letter and send it to all the different social clubs out there to see if we have any volunteers That's a great idea. who would like to assist in, in working on these. Yes, there is, uh, Council. That's a great idea. And, just, uh, just a suggestion. Yeah, I send out a general uh, that, letter to those agencies that uh, I'm most in contact with, as well as the mayor's office and uh, other agencies, to request volunteers to take care of uh, these areas. Yeah. If I can help you in any way, please let sure. me know. Ms. Louise, thank you. <laughs> and Mr. Louise, thank you. Great job down there by you, too. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any new, uh, Councilor Brophy? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just uh, let uh, the members know and everyone here, as a member of uh, the Council Member of the Beautification Committee, I'd be happy to bring this item before the Beautification Committee and maybe help coordinate the efforts to, uh, to maintain these parks, because they, they certainly um, they certainly do need to be maintained and inventoried. I'm, I'm concerned that we don't know if there are some monuments out there that have fallen right. aside and, and, you know, they're dedicated for people who served uh, this country and in most part gave their lives to it. So um, I'd be happy as a member to bring this up. We'll get a meeting, uh, talk to Mr. Thorson about putting a meeting together and, and putting this on the agenda. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councilor Ianieri. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, and I too, want to thank uh, Mrs. Louisi for her presentation here this evening. I think it's uh, very, very important that uh, she be present and to speak about uh, her uncle and, and these uh, memorials and, and for the other veterans that are here within the uh, city of Brockton. And I did have some of the same comments that Councilor Brophy had, had just mentioned. I, I, I think uh, all of us as councilors and, and all of us as ward councilors even as I look at this list, there's two or three facilities here that are right within Ward 3. Um, and I know of some other families that take care of the Timothy Holster Park. Uh, the family takes care of it as well. That's on West Chestnut Street. And we just did some uh, outstanding work there this past, uh, last past summer um, w with the grounds there. So uh, whatever I can do to, to make sure that these are taken care of, I'm going to do. I agree with um, uh, Superintendent Kassiri in, in indicating that we do need an ordinance because I think what he's driving at is, is the point that it's some, somewhere along the line union people are going to be, begin to say you're giving me extra duties beyond the scope of what we're supposed to be doing and that could become an issue and, and I think we do have to have an ordinance in place for that. But I think right now our job is to try to, um, to correct some of these wrongs and get these things taken care of and, and, and beautify the, uh, the memorial. So again, thank you Mrs. Louise and thank the uh, department heads for, for being present this evening. Thank you Mr. Chairman. Thank you Councilor Ianieri. Any new? Chairman. Uh, just a point of information, if you don't mind. Point of information? Yes. Uh, when when any, any union does anything out of the scope of their duties, they have to go back and sit down with the personnel director to re redo their contract. So 
even if there was an ordinance telling them that they can do this, you can do that, if it's outside of this scope of work, they have to go back and re renegotiate that contract. So if this, if, the, if it's just a, just a point of information saying, letting you know that, even if we put this ordinance in place, or if we don't put the ordinance in place and we split it up to the three places, and these and they want to grieve it, either or, they're going to the ordinance is not going to supersede the CBA. That's all. So this is just one. Councilor Neary. Sorry, I'm sorry, Councilor Denapoli. That happens all the time. <laughs> it's a very common name, Is it the hair? Is that right? Is it the hair? You look like five. Is the hair. Hair. the hair and the glasses. All Good right. thing you don't sit well, next just, to each other. Just thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to follow up with uh, my fellow <laughs> counselor, Mr. Sininsky, uh, on volunteers. There's a lot of uh, uh, Eagle Scouts that are going to earn an Eagle badge. Maybe they can help in, in doing some of the work, too. It's just another way of looking for volunteers because I'm going to an Eagle Scout presentation in a couple of weeks, and I know they have to earn their badges. So maybe we can reach out to some of the troops in the city of Brockton for some assistance. Just a, an idea. Well, maybe when you're at that uh, presentation, you could mention that, Council, because that, that would be the spark that you know would spread uh, throughout I, the I will uh, do that scouting and community, and they could pass you know. that on to you, Mr. Farrell. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Th thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council Dubois. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to say that I completely agree with um, Mr. Sedensky because I think that uh, what a great opportunity for people to be able to continue doing what they're doing now, which is maintaining. Um, monuments as a civic duty, but they wouldn't be the only ones to have to do it. So you wouldn't be taking away something that they find valuable and get um, pride out of, but you'd also be giving them the support that they need in order so they didn't feel like all the pressure was on their own shoulders, which it shouldn't be. But I know that when I clean up the park that I clean up and I, the people I do it with, we kind of like doing it. It's just the fact that we have to do it every single time that gets a little crazy. <laughs> um, and then the only other thing I want to stay in open session with all the players here is that I would really feel terrible if all of a sudden these monuments just got cemented because it's easier to maintain cement than grass and flowers. Because, you know, a memorial that's just cement sometimes is beautiful, but when they're always cement, it gets a little redundant and ridiculous. So just, just to put that in the back of your mind, we don't want to pave our cement over our beautiful memorials um, just for expediency either. So thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Petty. Mr. Chairman. Good evening, everyone. On July 12, 1862, then President Abraham Lincoln created the Medal of Honor for those who died and um, had heroic actions uh, during the Civil War. Uh, maybe we can take this 151st anniversary um, of that creation of that medal and use that to spark everyone's interest and get everyone to work um, on the islands and the memorials around the city as Mrs. Louise uh, indicated uh, or alluded to moments ago. Um, so let's take that anniversary and, uh, and work with it and uh, get everyone involved. Ask the VFWs, ask the American Legions, ask the scouts, um, ask the schools. I don't even know uh, what they teach in school anymore about the Civil War or World War I, Korea, Vietnam. I, I don't know if they learned what we learned, the Battle of the Bulge and, 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 um, and the other uh, main events of, uh, of wars throughout our history. But uh, hopefully we can, we can come together tonight and, uh, and, and figure out uh, who is going to do what and uh, get everything looking uh, as it should. Certainly. Thank you very much, Mr. Farrell. You're welcome, Councilor. I'll defer to Mr. Louisi for what they teach in uh, schools. Now there you go. Thank I'll you. ask him. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, before Councilor Sullivan finishes up, I'd like to also thank Mrs. Louisi for, and Mr. Louisi for the work you've done. I'd also like to mention that Timothy Holster Park is named after the first cousin of our colleague, uh, Councilor Paul Stadensky. So we, we thank both of your families for the service that they've given to the country. So thank you. Councilor Sullivan. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think the, uh, the intent of my resolve uh, has been met. I mean, the discussion points tonight have merit, uh, and action has to occur, and it has to occur quickly. Uh, just a, a couple of things. Um, what Mrs. Louise passed out here, great article from 1947 from the Brockton Enterprise. 66 years ago, the people that sat in our chairs knew the importance of this, and we need to continue that process. 
And then another historical thing, Stanley Bowman, the late great Stanley Bowman took this picture, another piece of Brockton history. So I think the, the discussion points are great. My only, uh, my only caution is that the discussion is great in here, but it needs to continue out of here, and we need to make sure that we move forward. And I concur with my colleague, uh, Chris McMillan. Um, you don't necessarily need an ordinance. Uh, just dissect it, designate it, and, and get it done. That's what needs to happen. But I think my colleague, uh, Ms. Dubois, made a good point about um, not this group of people, potentially down the line for cost savings using cement. So if we do an ordinance, let's put it in there, a prohibition against cementing the, we can do that. Yeah. Um, I don't think we need an ordinance, but I'd be happy to work to get it done. I think time is of the essence, so if the gentlemen here tonight have represented and warranted to us that they're going to dissect it and divvy it up and get it done, that's great so that people don't need to take their time out there and hurt their backs uh, mowing lawns and pulling weeds. Volunteerism is great. I, I support it 100 percent. I think it's really the earmark of the city of Brock and the city champions. But at the end of the day, um, the city has an obligation and a duty to take care of these for the people that gave their lives. So that's what needs to happen, and that's what this discussion was tonight. So I want to thank the gentleman for coming here tonight. I want to thank Mrs. Luizzi. I think this discussion uh, was, was worthwhile, and it, it really gets to the heart of why we are public servants. We are public servants because we have a democracy, and we only have democracy because the men and women that died fighting for that democracy. So with that, I, uh, I want to make a, a motion, a favorable motion to recommend this favorable Second. to the Second. Council. Second. The motion is made and seconded to recommend this resolve favorably to the full city council. All those in favor? Opposed? Recommended favorably. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen and man. Item number six. Resolve that Mr. Carl Landerholm, as president of the Brockton Historical Society, come before the Finance Committee to discuss the planned expansion and enhancements of the Brockton Historical Society building located at 216 North Pearl Street, Brockton, Mass. Invited Carl Landerholm, president of the Brockton Historical Society. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Sullivan. I guess it's my night tonight, but I filed this resolve after speaking with Mr. Landerholm. Myself and my colleague Chris McMillan recently attended the Dewey Stone celebration at Temple Beth Amuna. And I was pleased to have a nice conversation with Mr. Landholm, the, uh, the new president of the Brockton, Brockton Historical Society, who is really uh, digging in and doing some good things. And if we look at the Brockton Historical Society, it really runs the gamut of the benefit it offers the citizens of the city of Brockton. The Thomas Edison a Day uh, for the children, the school children. Of course, uh, what they did during the Rocky Marciano a statue dedication. And uh, he just informed me uh, this evening, and he'll talk about it tonight, that they're having an open house on Friday nights, which is really drawing a lot of excitement in people. So um, really, I wanted Mr. Landholm to come here tonight to explain the conversation we had that day at Temple Beth Amuna and the excitement that they have planned for expansion and beautifying and enhancing uh, really that gym at North Pearl Street at 216 North Pearl Street, the Brockton Historical Society, uh, the Rocky Marciano archives that are there, the Shoe Museum that is there, and of course the Brockton Fire Department Museum that's there. So Mr. Landholm, thank you for coming tonight, sir. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity, Councillors. I am uh, pleased to uh, indicate that we have a five-year plan. It's a strategic plan that all developed around a gift that started the ball rolling for the Dewey Stone event. The Stone Farm was a component of the Stone family, originally the Packet House. And as the story unfolds, the, uh, the Packet Home was built on what was to be the main street of Brockton because it was a turnpike between Taunton and Boston. It was a one-day trip to uh, the homestead and the second day would be to Boston, out of which the, uh, the gift of the building material that dates back to 1826 of the Packard House, a volunteer uh, documented in its exclusive uh, design Every component of the home was originally the Packard Estate. In his doing that, he also volunteered pro bono to do the homestead. Now, the homestead was built in 1767, out of which the restoration of it would be a, a key component. But to have the restoration really work, it has to be tied to handicapped accessibility, 
handicapped bathrooms. That developed into the full thought of putting a barn appearance, a tying the shoe museum to the fire museum, in that handicapped accessibility bathrooms and a certifiable kitchen would give us the opportunity to expand our uh, horizons significantly, which is part of the strategic five-year plan that we're working with. The important component is for the historical society and for all of us is a sense of place. That sense of place is Brockton. What the history was and what the future will be is understanding your sense of place. In April, we ran an event that was competition for third and fourth graders uh, for the Edison event. We had 95 adults and children, and the process was so well received that in uh, June, we had 125 third and fourth graders from Kennedy School, and the opportunity to teach at that level was provoked by my daughter with a 45 question questionnaire with a pencil and a set of eyes to go around all through the museum and come up with a check mark for each. And in this case, uh, Principal Rogan was going to complement the one that could fill out the list most. Since that time, we have decided that uh, Fun Free Friday would be a great thing because most programs don't operate on Friday. They go Monday to Thursday. We opened last Friday and we had 15 uh, folks and one was from France, totally consumed by the history of Brockton. So the passion that uh, I share is the opportunity to give everybody the passion for the understanding of what everything has been brought to. I'll example uh, a letter from a Jay Braley down in Thorndike, Pennsylvania, who requested uh, to okay. find out the story of his grandfather and grandmother, who in uh, September 1919 wasn't sure that he even existed. Through the records that we have at the Historical Society, this individual did in fact live at 20 Belmont Street. That was the Belmont Hotel. He was a composite and he was from Philadelphia and he died when he was 47 years old. That was from the records that are maintained at the Historical Society. And of all of the important things that we want to do, it's to have a plan, to you to understand the plan. We're not asking you to fund it, but it will be a capital campaign. The blue that you see in this rendition is the original color when the property was in its heyday. It was a tavern for over 100 years. And prior to that, it was, was Howard's Dairy. All of this was found out by Ryan Haywood, the documenter of the property. The interior of it and its construction will allow us to go for a grant. That grant will uh, sustain the society. We're not a line item from city budget, but we have a passion to make sure that you understand we care what goes on at the Brockton Historical Society and the records that are kept and in harmony with what is kept in the city records, we have an audit trail that is uh, significant and we appreciate your awareness of what we are attempting to do to show that we have a value to the city, a value to the young people as a learning tool and as a promise for tomorrow in the level of understanding that a sense of place is important and it's taught in the school level and by coordinating our efforts, the jewel that you have sitting on 216 North Pearl Street is the portal for young people to recognize there is great opportunity still. And my father, and this is digressing just briefly, <clears throat> in early 1900s lost his parents and he was thrown into an orphanage in Avon <coughs> called a Lutheran orphanage. When he got to be 16 years old, they gave him a $5 bill and kicked him out the door and said, go make a life. 
He walked from Avon, saw that he could take residence up in the YMCA for a buck and a quarter a week, continued on down to the south end and got a job at George E. Keith's shoe factory behind a dinka. That lasted one week. He's smarter than that and said, I can't take this. He was walking back and he saw Frank Lee, Lee Electric, assembling a fixture in the front window. He walked in, he said, I can do that. He says, you got a job. And that's how he became a uh, component of the electrical industry. But he was an immigrant that recognized that he had opportunity. That opportunity still exists. And we just need to get behind the reality of it. I, I, I'm not on a bully pulpit, but I'm saying that the history of this city is important for all of us. And I know you appreciate it. I would love to see you all up there to recognize the jewel that exists and how uh, we're advancing on a great plan. It's well thought out and it's well vetted <coughs> with the uh, members. And I open it for questions. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Landholm, thank you, uh, first of all, for that, uh, that information. The five-year um, plan is, is outstanding. Um, I, I, I didn't know that the color back in the day was the blueberry uh, blue. Uh, which is which is unbelievable. I also didn't know you could do genealogy research or at least get a, a component of genealogy research out of the historic society. I, you always do it here at City Hall or at the library. So that, that's I think that's a great information piece. Um, and of course the capital campaign, you know, none of this is going to be achieved without the financing. Uh, and, and I know there'll be some local people donating and some elected people donating. And, um, my question to you is, is this um, site on the National Register of Historic Places? To answer the question directly, it is not, but if we restore it back to its original condition, uh, we would then be able to apply for a national uh, recognition. When you put aluminum siding and aluminum corners, you've taken the history and covered it up. The, fortunately, the cladboards that are beneath the vinyl siding uh, can be restored. The interior of the building was examined uh, by camera by Ryan Haywood. He's an architect and a, uh, a rest restoration expert. He is helping us to write the grant that would ensure accessibility throughout the whole building without changing the historical uh, component of how the building was originally constructed. It's secure and it needs help but we have the capacity to do it with your awareness. I might point out that in 1971, the property was turned over to the city as a gift from the Doton family. And some level of controversy in uh, 71, it was offered to the Brockton Historical Society as a, uh, a gift. As a headquartered location to house the history of Brockton. In the deed that was signed by Richard Wainwright, should the Brockton Historical Society fail, that property would revert to the trustees of the Melrose Cemetery. And ensuring that that never takes place is to have a forward plan work the plan and ensure that history will continue. But the gift came from the city and it has been uh, improved by virtue of the Shoe Museum, which is the finest collection of shoes. Right, digressing one more time. Uh, this is a little more than a week and a half ago. I got a phone call from Jerry. Now I don't know who Jerry is at the moment but Jerry happened to have been the interpreter for the sculptors of the Marciano statue. And I had taken the sculptors and their wives, the interpreter, to the society and they were taken by the shoe museum. They, they were taken totally by surprise of what beauty actually existed up there. Jerry called because he was in Brockton. He was at George's and he wanted to show his wife and his two sons, one getting ready to go to college, the other one a nine-year-old, what the shoe museum was, because he was so taken back by it. And 
in that moment I said, I'll see you there at five o'clock. We spent an hour and a half and from San Antonio, Texas, his wife was the daughter of one of the sculptors, but she was the curator of the San Antonio Museum. So now we have a connection that there is a collaboration of opportunity. And that's what takes place when you have dialogue. And this dialogue, I hope, is informative. And the resolve is to give me the opportunity to excite your curiosity. Thank you. Yeah, again, I, I just want to uh, thank you for your volunteerism on this. And uh, every time I go up there, I've been a member of the Historic Society for 10 years now, easy. And uh, you always see you up there. You see Willie Wilson up there, uh, Jim Benson. I mean, you see the same people, Annie Danielson, uh, Jerry Beal. So there's, there's, there's a lot of volunteerism, uh, people that care about the city of Brock. And what you're telling us today is exciting because it's going to open up a whole plateau for people that are physically challenged and handicapped to get in there to actually see what's in there because they're missing out right now, not having the capabilities of getting in there. So um, with that, I, I, again, I want to thank you, Ms. Lehano, for what you're doing. Um, you know, I, I will always support the Historic Society, uh, being the son of a history teacher. So I want to thank you. And uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions? Mr. Chairman. Councillor Petty. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Landerholm. Good evening. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your service to the City of Rockton as an employee and also, more, more importantly, as the President of the Historical Society. And even more important than that, Mr. Landerholm, I want to thank you for your passion for our city. And the uh, individual that you referenced a moment ago, that would be Jerry Padilla. And he's a son-in-law of the sculptor Mario Rendon. And, uh, and uh, I had spoken with him as well. And uh, he was ecstatic that you were able to meet with him at the, uh, at the Historical Society and bring his family through. And uh, as you said, that's, that's a network. That's someone who, coming through Massachusetts to look at, look at schools for, their, for his child, took the time to come through Brockton to show them the history um, of our city. I want to thank you for that. Thank and, you. And uh, I'm all on board, as I'm sure all of us are, uh, with regard to the expansion of the uh, Historical Society. History is extremely important. Uh, Brockton has an incredible history. And uh, the story that you just uh, told us about your father um, is extraordinary. It's, um, I'm sure there are, there are many others like that throughout the country, but, uh, but more importantly, right here in Brockton. Um, as everyone knows, I'm Kyle Landerholm is the president of the Historical Society. And last September, when we were preparing for the, uh, the Rock Marciano statue dedication, uh, Mr. Landerholm and the others at the Historical Society um, were part of the creation of the Rocky Weekend, uh, which included tours at the Historical Society. And prior to the statue dedication, I received a phone call. And it was from a Russell Plord, whose father, uh, back in the uh, 40s and 50s and into the 60s, owned Plord Display Company right here in Brockton. And after Rocky won the heavyweight championship of the world on September 23rd, 1952, he came back home uh, in the first weeks of October, and the city naturally had a grand parade in honor of Rocky. And on Legion Parkway, uh, there were banners that were made that were hanging from the post on Legion Parkway. And uh, I, as I mentioned, received a phone call from Mr. Plourd from Russell, and he indicated that there's only one flag known to exist. There may be others somewhere, but we don't know where they are. But uh, he had the one, f the one banner uh, known to still be in existence. And he gave that flag to me, or gave that banner to me, and uh, I said after the dedication um, that uh, I'm going to see to it that uh, it goes to the Historical Society. And if I may, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, show everyone that banner and present it to Mr. Landerholm with the hopes that it can be incorporated and become a permanent part of the Rocky Marciano exhibit at the Historical Society. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Landerholm. There's no objection. You may give him. Thank you. I'm, this here, as I will show in a moment, is, one, is the last known banner that was on display on Legion Parkway during that parade in October 1952, welcoming the new heavyweight champion of the world, 
back home to Brockton. Council, why don't you bring it right up to the uh, rostrum and the TV camera can get a look at it. The land of home. <laughs> Proud to present this to you. We put on display the Brockton Historical Society. Oh, that's great. Wow. <laughs> Outstanding. Oh, that's great. You can see it. You go, Mr. Land of Home. Take good care of that. It's now in your care. <laughs> it is done. Oh, stay very, very Thank much. Thank you. Do we have a brief, brief recess? We'll, we'll take a vote in a minute and on the resolve. And okay. Mr. Chairman, I don't think Councillor Petty could stand in the ring with Rocky, but if you look at that likeness, Todd has a better smile than the Rock did. <laughs> <laughs> and a few more teeth. I don't know how we're going to move on next year. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it, Councillor Petty? Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. <laughs> Councilor Sullivan. But before I make my motion, I, I'll be uh, remiss if I didn't uh, also thank uh, uh, former Fire Chief Ken Galligan, who spends uh, many, many hours of volunteer at the Fire Museum. And there's just so many people here in the city of Brockton. And uh, again, thank you, Carl, for coming tonight. I know you have a busy summer. This is extremely important, and it kind of exactly ties into the, the last resolve we had about uh, the veterans. Because again, uh, we're here for a short period of time but it's the legacy that's going to carry on generation to generation. So with that, I proudly make a favorable recommendation to the full city council. Second. 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 Motion made and seconded to recommend the resolve favorably to the full city council. All those in favor? Opposed? Recommended favorably. Thank you very much. Thank you, councillors. Item number seven. Resolved that due notice be given to Antonio Perez of Perez Brothers Auto Repair Incorporated that he is requested to appear before a committee of this council to discuss issues relative to violations of the conditions of the motor vehicle repair license granted for the premises located at 13 Watson Street. Invited James Casseri, Superintendent of Buildings, Scott Allman, Brockton Police Code Enforcer, Antonio Perez Brothers Auto Repair Incorporated. Council Studensky. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And you are Antonio Fires? Yes. I am. Are you you're the sole owner of the business? Uh, me and my brother. My brother's not here. All right. I'd like to give you a chance to speak about your business, about the location of your business, and how you might be able to improve what's going on at that location. Um, the location for business for me is not too good because I got a lot of customers, the problem I have is um, I got a lot of customers. You know, the street is one-way street. Sometimes, you know, some people don't want to stand. You guys, I don't know how. I fight every day, you know, to try to control the traffic, but it's on a lot of people, and that's why I can control everything to be like the way it's supposed to be. And um, I try to find another place here in Brockton, because um, I've been in Brockton like 10 years. I got a lot of business, a lot of customers from Brockton. My business is from Brockton. That's why I tried to find another place. I was very bad that place in the 77 North Main Street. I got just the paper here to try to, to file the, the application for the license to see if it can move like second location from there and to see if it can resolve the problem because it's, I know it's, be, it's, be, it's not be too look too good because every day is the same story. A lot of, lot of cars, a lot of cars, and um, even me personally, I don't like that because it's, it's not look too good. You probably all agree with that the, the day you moved there. You must be great mechanics because you are right. You yes. Great business. Yes. But I heard you say it's a one-way street. How long has it been a one-way street? Uh, I, I don't understand. You said it was a one-way street. Yeah, one way. It's a dead end street, dead but street. cars yeah. travel on both sides. Yeah, yeah, right? both sides, yeah. Okay. The problem, and I want you to understand, Antonio, the mm. problem is the way the parking of the customers and your workers up on the sidewalks, mm. knocking it down to a single lane, and then when you get a delivery or somebody there to pick a vehicle up, they're not very responsive to the needs of the other motorists and the neighbors. Yes. They basically say, huh. Hey, and it's not right. 
You're not right. I know. It's not I know. right. I know. My phone rings. The police department gets calls. It's unbelievable. But now you say you're going to 77 North Main Street? Yeah, North Main Street. And, and what date would that be on? Uh, maybe like a couple of weeks. Okay. Do you have the paperwork with you that would show that? Yes, yes, of course. Okay. Uh, I'd like to ask Officer Allman just to look at that and make it easier for me. How many other partners do you have, Antonio? It's me and my brother. Just you and your brother? Yes. Is your brother Earl? Uh, yes, he's, uh, he's on my secretary. He's worked for me. All right. That's not, that's not your brother? He's not my brother, but he's okay. worked for me on the office. All right. Earl was calling my house. My yes, because... House slash office. Mm -hmm. uh, I left him a message. Uh, you've been called in here because we want to talk to you. Me in particular. You recognize me? Yes, of course. I'm your ward counselor. Yes. There's uh, just the multitude of calls that occur down there and the problems are unbelievable. Yes, and because I, I want to try to do the best I can to don't happen anymore because, uh, you know, a lot of cars from a lot of people over there. That's why I fight it every day because I know it's not, it's not look good. Because okay. And, and believe me, I, I do believe that you have have a great business. I see it. Yeah. I see the amount of vehicles, the amount of uh, people going in and out. Uh, but, you know, when you were granted the license, you couldn't leave an engine out on Watson Street, and that's been done more than once. Those, are, those are straight-up violations that can't occur. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to allow you 60 days to get up to North Main Street. If you're not there, I'm going to bring you back in before the council, and we're going to actually have a straight-up hearing and we're going to look at revocation of your license. Okay, okay. It's very, very important. I've asked the, the good officer to look. Can I ask you, is, is that a... 77 North Main Street is currently the location of Matters Garage. It's oh. across from Spring and North Main. Yep. It's down the hill. Right. Oh, that There's virtually no parking there as it is at all. That, that's a smaller thing than what he's in now, oh. right? Yeah. No. He's going to be in worse shape then than he is now. He's going to have no parking. No, no, because um, that, that place is, is mine. I'm going to use like for storage car or whatever it is. To, uh, when the car is done, I just, I'm going to move the car from there. Or like for the car for the insurance, I can park over there, just yeah, over there just to do you, work. You can't do that on one license. No, no, I just, that's why I applied for another last license for move there. This is an application. He wants to move there. Uh, currently, that's licensed to Mattis Garage. I don't know that you can have more than one license at a location like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, because the other guy is not going to work over there no more. Freddy Maras is, uh... He's going to have both licenses. He's still going to stay at that uh, location, Councilor, down on Watson Street. He's going to use it for storage. Well, that, that'll be something that we will look at when you make application, but if, if you're not going to move your business up there, then I'm going to move for revocation. Just, it can't occur. You, you can't impinge and impede and stop everybody else's right to make movement on a street yes. just because you're a busy business. Mm -hmm. The object is for you to find a bigger location. Okay. I and I don't think 77 North Main Street is the answer to your uh, now because the problem. The, um, the problem now, I, that's why I talked to all my secretary, you're going to do the appointment, like this is going to be better for us to do it by appointment. All right, you know the officer. He's yes, part of the code enforcement team. Yes, yes. He personally has been there 19 times on calls to your business. 19 times. Yes. He cited you, etc., and he had to go to court to get a judge to order you to follow the rules that are on your license. That's what he's there for. When, when you were here to get a license, you were given specifics. And apparently you didn't understand that. I'm, I'm going to, I'm just going to let you know now. You can talk in one second, but I'm going to let you know now. I'm really not going to wait that long. I, I, I don't even like the thought of the way you're operating or trying to operate. All I can picture is, thank, thank God, in my opinion, it's not Ward 4 where you're going to. That'll be somebody else up here who's going to have the calls on that one. But I'm still going to get the calls on Watson Street. Yeah, it's my ward. And there's a way to do it. There is a way to do it. You have to go and get the proper building. You shouldn't, probably shouldn't be anywhere near residences. And you have to run business the right way. If you're a good mechanic, you have to learn how to be a good business owner and businessman. All right.
you have anything to say, please. No, I understand. Like you say, everything you say is, is true. I got to, you know, make some change. Now, I have to ask you, there was a female here when you got your license. Yes. She was the owner originally, right? No, no, no. No? She was a work on the, on the office before, but she's not here right now. All right, I'm, I'm going to... I'm all done. I, anybody else want to ask a question? The person in charge of 77 North Main might want to. Oh. Mr. Chairman, I'm all done. Council Dubois. Um, my question, uh, it's definitely not addressed to you, sir, and I don't know who it's addressed to, but if we have these auto par automotive places in locations that cause neighbors problems, I'd like the City Council, maybe it's a separate resolve, to investigate how we can get rid of grandfathering of these lots. I have quite a few in my ward where they're bad locations for auto bodies, but because it was an auto body in 1820, <laughs> we're stuck with it being an auto body in 2013. And I think that we really need to revisit this because do you feel as though your location causes you some problems? Do you think if you were to move locations, some of your problems would go away? Yes, I think so. Because the, the, the problem that, that plays is Simon. And, uh, you know, when you got a lot of customers, some customers are going to call you. When you're busy, say, no, don't come today, come tomorrow. But some customers don't call. Sometimes they come like maybe five, six, ten. Sometimes they come one time. You know, this is the problem I have. Yep. Mr. Kassiri, did you have something? I think this yes. gentleman has something else yes. to say. Yeah, I think what you're referring to, Councillor, is more of a zoning issue where if the use is not abandoned, then the use stays with the property. Yeah. However, when these gentlemen come before you, you have the right to make the stipulations <coughs> that Scotty will enforce. Yeah, but you know... But when, when you maybe you do want to change something on but zoning is... The use stays with the building unless the use is abandoned for two years. I'm specifically talking about the Elliott Street garage that uh, Councilor DiNapoli and I have to deal with. And that use had been abandoned and it was like a city garage in the early 1960s or something. And previous to that it was a garage, but then it was nothing for years. And all of a sudden the, someone came in and wanted to put in a garage and I was told there was nothing we can do about it to stop it. So I'm just, just in general, I think that's something we need to look into because yep. we have so many auto body shops that just keep proliferating. Anybody that can put up a used space building can open up an auto body next to someone's house. And it's just so ridiculous. It's well, one they of the really can't problems. do that. They have to be zoned for that. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. Like that's a problem. But I understand what you're saying. And I just have some advice for you, sir. Um, there is a business, and it's gonna, I, I really want you to understand what I'm saying. It's one of the only, one of the good things that exist in downtown Brockton, and maybe some people can help me with the name of it, it's called PACE. It's, it's retired business people that volunteer to come in and look, score, score. It's retired business people, it's run out of the, um, chamber. the chamber of commerce. So you should look into this. And there are retired business people that have run successful businesses. They're just there to look at how you're running your operation and to give you some advice on how you might be able to utilize their experience to improve your business skills. And it's free. So you should look into that. Okay. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Pyres. Um, when, you, when you first applied for this license, did you have an attorney? Did you have legal counsel helping you on the application? Did you have a lawyer? No, no. Did, did you understand at that time what the conditions that were placed upon the license meant? Yes. And you understand that a license is a privilege. It's not a right. So a license can be revoked at any time. Yes, I do. Okay, so uh, my colleague, Mr. Staninsky, is giving you X amount of times. He's giving you a specific drop dead date. Uh, and if you don't move, uh, you'll be coming back before us for a hearing. And as a result of that hearing, we may revoke your license. You understand that? If, uh, okay, let me be clear with this. If, like, um, like you guys, get, it says it's going to give me like around 60 days. That's like, what the counselor of the yeah, ward has yeah, placed upon move. it, 60 days. I just want you to understand clearly yes. that, that it, that's a serious uh, Revocation of a license, in essence, will take you out of business. You understand that. Okay. So you, you, you have to adhere to 
uh, the time stipulation that the ward council, Mr. Stadinsky, has placed. He also is the former police chief in the city of Brockton, so he understands clearly what violations, and Officer Ullman uh, does an excellent job in his profession as well. So um, if, if, if you get to that deadline, you, you'll back, be back here before us for a full hearing. And at that time, you, you could potentially have your license revoked. I just want to make sure you're clear on that, number okay, one. Okay. And number two, you may want to uh, consider listening to Council Dubois and speaking to SCORE at the Chamber of Commerce. Um, but again, I, I do caution you the serious nature of a revocation. So if you do get to that point, uh, you may want to hire an attorney, number one. But number two, you definitely want to keep in direct conversation with our fine Ward Council, Paul Stadinsky. Okay. Just okay. a humble suggestion, sir. Okay. Thank Council. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, Councilor DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good evening, sir. You, you said that you wanted to move to 77 North Main Street. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, because I want to see if like, I can have a like, second location because okay. of uh, some business, because I work, me and my two brothers on the same place. Okay. I can't like, leave like, my two brothers on the other place, all the you know then the business is going to be like silo because I'm going to spill the business. So you're going to split the business and you're going to move into... Yeah. Have, have you looked at... I, I know 77. Mm -hmm. I know the place you're talking about. I delivered auto parts there when I worked for Woodage. Where are you going to put automobiles? We, we, I, t I tell you, we're going to have a real serious problem when you come here for your license in that location. If you have as many cars as you have down in Ward 4, you're going to bring into my ward... You might as well. You might as well move to 159, which is two doors down. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding, but that's. Uh, I'm serious. There's. Uh, you and I are really going to have to talk, and Officer Ullman going to get together before you even come into this chamber for a license, because that, that's a very very small location. Now, because the, that place on inside, we not need like the, the the place for the park, the car. We need a place. I understand to, that, to but you, you're uh, having a problem not inside but outside, and then we don't want a problem on Main Street. No, no, no. We, we, I'm not going to cause no problem. Okay. I'm, I'm, the thing I say, I say I need a place like inside. To, like, over there, the other place the way I am now, we're going to put like three cars inside. But over there, I can put like maybe six, seven cars inside to work. You need a place to work. I don't need a place to park. Well, okay, all I can tell you is we'll talk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Monahan. So, good evening, sir. Good evening. So, you're saying that people will be del delivering their cars to Watson Street, and then you're going to bring their cars over there to work on them? Yes. So that people will be driving their cars and parking them there to, for service? Uh, on Main Street. On Main Street? Now, I can call, people can come straight to the Main Street. Even like I said, when the car is done, in case we don't, ha we don't have a room over there, I can bring to that place for inside and the gauge. Close the gauge. Okay. All right, thank you. Mr. Pyre, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Pyre, this is your second time here. Second time here. You remember being here the first time? Yes, yes. Okay. Everything I've heard doesn't, doesn't really solve the problem in Ward 4. And I'm not about to say, oh, he's a great guy and runs a great business, go up to Ward 6. That's not going to happen. Five. You have to change the way you operate. And the way you operate has to be changed by location. You can't do it. You can't, you can't make repairs to six or seven cars and have I mean, I don't, I'm not even sure how many cars you have in that lot that's out there. Okay. Uh, but, I, but I'll tell you, I've seen it. It's full. It's constantly full. And I've seen your sidewalks. You've got a 93-year-old gentleman who lives on that street. I couldn't get an ambulance down there to get him. He can't walk safely because of the people who drive. The tow truck drivers that you employ and bring in, take vehicles out, just have no respect for anybody. You have to change. And I'm just suggesting to you that you look for a good location now because... I'm going to talk with the council to our council. We're going to set up a hearing. We are a legislative body. I don't like the judicial end. It should be done through the court, period. But we're going to do it here, and we're going to end up revoking your license if you can't have the foresight. You've already paid a lot of money in fines. Yes. yes. Why, why wouldn't you think about it and say, gee, if I took that money and made a down payment elsewhere, I could 
Go off happily and get everything accomplished with no problem. You have to think ahead. It's not going to cut it. There's two strikes on you. I'll be in conference with the council to the council. You'll be coming back here, and I don't hear anything. I have to vote on the 77 North Main Street, too, and I, I can't get along with it. Now I hear that we're going to have a shuttle, relay shuttle, from Ward 4 to Ward 5 on the vehicles you're working on. Your business is too big for the location you're at, and it's not good to split them like that. You have to get a bigger place to work at. Okay. With that, Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion for an unfavorable recommendation to the full city council. Second. Uh, actually, you make the recommendation for favorable. We don't vote in the negative, so make the recommendation in the favorable in the hope that it will be voted unfavorably by the membership. Thank so you very make much. Make a motion to recommend favorably. Second. It is to recommend favorably in the hopes that it's rectified. Second. Second. Motion is made and seconded to recommend favorably to the full city council with the hopes that it will be recommended unfavorably. All those in favor, all those opposed. This is recommended unfavorably to the full city council. Thank you. Right. Good luck and hope you clean up your issues. All right. Thank you. Anything else, councilors? We're adjourned. Uh, next week, councilors, I'm going to be out of town. We have a full council meeting. Councilor Brophy will be running the meeting. I want you all to behave. <laughs> <laughs> We're adjourned. <laughs>